Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This is part two of my chat with Bradley. We finished the last podcast speaking about racism, and even though Bradley said, I don't want to get into this, but, and then spoke about racism, we then talk about it in this podcast for five, ten minutes, I guess. Uh, and we also talk about a lot of other stuff. Uh, we talk about like hard moral questions, um, such as one of them being kill eight puppies or kill and eat your best friend. We also talk about when it's okay to joke with things. We talk about Roger, the buff kangaroo, how adults act towards children. We talk about the great mystery behind Plum Bumble Crumble. Uh, and we also talk about cranking, because why the hell not? And also my potential future website, MikeBurtonsBeefCurtains.com. So it's an adventure. Um, once again, this is one of the more funny podcasts. It's not serious. We do talk about a few serious issues. Obviously, at the start of this, we do talk about racism. But in general, we have a laugh doing it. It's a lot of fun. It was great fun recording it. And... Yeah, if you just want to chuck something on for an hour and just kind of just switch your brain off in a sense and just listen, then yeah, this will be a very enjoyable podcast for you. Before we get started, there's a quick word from a fellow podcaster, and then we get right into it. I'll be back at the end, as usual, and yeah, if you just follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all those lovely places. Thanks as always for tuning in, guys, and I'll speak to you at the end. What up, Slackers? I'm Matt. And I'm Jesse. We're the host of American Slacker, a weekly show that discusses the weirdest in world events. We cover UFC, the latest in technology, Xbox games, entertainment, and music reviews. We have conversations with musicians, actors, filmmakers, and other interesting guests. Twist one up or crack one open with us every Monday to start your work week off right. That's it. There you go. Welcome to Genuine Chit Chat, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. And I'm your host, Mike Burton. I mean, I don't want to get into the conversation of racism and stuff because it's it could go on forever. But it's a very I, delicate. It, subject. It's something I I don't understand is how people now can be racist. I mean, oh, I, 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 well, no, I understand. No. I understand how people can be racist. Lucas, sorry, the the the, the kids. Sorry, they... Mike just like put his finger to my mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, close. If I was closer <laughs> to you, I would. The guy, the guy is there's there's Dustin, Luke, Lucas, there's eleven. Dustin, the kid who goes missing, I think is Mike. Is is Will? Yeah, Will. Then there's Mike. There's Mike. And Mike's yeah. the one who's in it. Oh, and he okay. and it, well, I swear to you, is laugh out loud funny. Like, literally hilarious. As in, me and Callum were cry laughing in the cinema at parts where it was so funny, and then it gets so dark. And it's, the, the juxtaposition between it's really good. But yeah, the black kid in, in uh, Stranger Things is called Lucas. I'm very sorry to everyone I couldn't remember that, and I had to only identify him by his skin colour. I'm sorry. But sorry, continue about your thing about racism. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I so. I feel like I have to over-explain myself for it because it's just I have Mike, to make such a point. <clears throat> Mike, people know you're not a racist. No, but people who know me know I'm not a racist. You know, people who listen to this, hopefully, it'll be more than my five friends. You know, if, if, if four friends, I'm not your friend. <laughs> four friends of my one acquaintance who comes on the podcast. <laughs> All I was saying is I I understand how people can be racist with things that happen in the world right now with you know attacks and bombings and all that kind of thing. I understand how people could be against that. Do you want to say like, of people? Yeah, so if people are against, like obviously neither of us are against Muslims, but you're saying, oh god, no, no yeah, obviously. But I understand if, why people would be if they're like uneducated and stupid. And the only thing they see is Muslims <laughs> causing terrorism. Yeah, I mean, they're dumb. If if I'm in the town centre, yeah, and I see someone in a turban, yeah. let's say that's really sort of stupid to say, but yeah, in a turban, yeah, I I don't look at them immediately. Think, oh my god, they've got bombs under their jacket. Yeah, I I. Don't even double take. It's just another person walking past. Oh yeah, especially places like Southampton. It's a multicultural. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I but I do understand why people would see that because of uneducated. the way the world is at the moment. Yeah, I, but then I get the black people, for example. It's like, oh it's like, yeah, what? That, so that. They ever, like, even to go back history, they, they've never done anything wrong. It's like we've wronged them for so many years, and we finally stopped wronging them, and then there's still white people who're still against them. It's like, what? I don't understand. It's it's very strange, especially. <sighs> against black people because there is no reason at all no literally no reason at all it's exactly it's just like if people if there's like if, if there are people who are not caucasian who are racist towards white people that's almost more understandable because it's like well, white people have gone over the world oh we you know, suck we've, we've killed native in, like native americans or native indians depending on how politically incorrect you want to be um you know we obviously there were slaves 
Um, we've we've gone around the world, you know, enslave, especially the British Empire, going around enslaving people, killing people, all this sort of stuff. You know, it's not the same. It is just, uh, it just triggered me. So I watched that film, uh, Detroit, uh, the other week. Um, do you know what I'm on about? I know what you're on about. Yeah. yeah, it's got John Boyega who's in Star Wars in it. He's fantastic in it. It's a guy called Will Poulter as well. He's amazing. He's in We're the Millers and The Reven- Revenant. Um, he's fantastic in it as well. And the acting is just unbelievable. But it's all about, in 1967, there were like riots in Detroit and stuff. I'm not going to spoil the story or anything. But it's about, in 1967, there was uh, race fueled riots, basically. Okay? And I remember, I watched that film when it came out of the cinema. And I was with Alex. Um, and... I was just shaking with anger. I, I, no film has ever made me that angry in my life because there's people in that who are obviously horrendously racist, calling people the N-word and doing all sorts of stuff and being saying things like, uh, there's one part which is there's a white woman with a black guy and someone says, why do you have to be with someone like that? Why do you have to be with them? Like, why do you have to fuck them? And it's like, that's so disgusting and so awful, even 50 years ago, because I think it's 50 years this year is when, that film, when the film, the events of the film take place. And it's like, 50 years ago, that was disgustingly, unbelievably horrible and awful. But people are still like that today. It's like, what? Yeah. How? Really Why? small-minded people. I don't get it. Oh, it triggers me so much. It gets so under my skin. Cause I try not to think angry. about it too much because it, it yeah. does start to anger me. Yeah, it's just like, what? It's like, there's so many reasons you can hate people. There's so many groups of people you can hate and there's so many reasons you can hate people. And people choose... <sighs> it's just so annoying. It's literally... Down, Mike. It's okay. It's literally like the only difference is basically the pigmentation of your skin is different because there's a higher concentration of melanin. Because melanin, I believe it's something like it prevents, it helps prevent sunburn. That's, that's literally, because obviously you look at like there's this demographic of uh, skin colour close to the equator. And obviously people who are close to the equator, they have a darker skin colour. And people who are further from the equator, like people in Greenland, ice and that sort of thing, are, are the whitest. Because it's directly linked to how much sunlight there is. If you're in yeah. the harsh... 30 to 40, 30 to 40 degree sun all day every day yeah, your skin adapts yes yeah, exactly mm. you need it's an evolution it's literally like it's actually beneficial it's it's you know what i mean it's like people can be hate people for being stupid or having stupid ideas or even dislike someone you know for having different music to you don't dislike them for something that not only can they not control but it's also like actual evolution taking place it's like what it's like 80 cents ah oh, it's, it's almost laughable if it wasn't so fucking hurtful and offensive and triggering <laughs> Ugh. It just uh, bothers me so much. <clears throat> oh well. Calm down, Mike. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's going to be okay. For now. Well, it's not. It will be, maybe. <laughs> maybe not in this immediate Well, not now. I'm moment, not saying this podcast but... is going to come out and then suddenly racism is going to cure. It's going to be disappear across Maybe the you'll do it over the next week. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll, I'll solely cure you'll racism. single-handedly stop racism. Here's a question for you that you may not want to answer. Would oh, you God. die... No, if would you die if it would stop racism? Oh, man... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just to make you, just to be clear, so I'm not putting you in whole decision. I don't know. For me, no. <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it? Where I'd like to say yes because you'd save, you save so many. I, I suppose you'd have to almost define it. If it's like, if you think about police brutality, mainly in America, you know, and a lot of uh, black guys are killed by white cops and stuff like that. Yeah, and that is. That's obviously a problem. There's a lot of institutionalised uh, racism and things. There's a lot of problems with those sorts of things. But it's like, if you took racism out of it, would would people still die? Because you think of like, in America, anyone can have a gun. If you pull someone over, they're black or white. They could have a gun. People, pull, police, there's like, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the name of the camera? Thing cam. De- d- uh, dash cam. Dash, yeah, dash, dash cam. cam. There's like dash cam footage of like cops just pulling someone over because they've got like a, a rear light out or something whatever and it's just like you know they pull them over the window comes down the gun shoots them straight in the face and they die and then the car drives off it's like yeah, it can happen. what it's, it's, like... Happen. it's nothing to do with the race it can happen with anyone mm. yeah <clears throat> was well, like the racism thing I don't know if you said to me Mike you can die tomorrow a gunshot in the head and it would remove any deaths or violence of racism no I'd feel like I'd almost have to say yes no I'm I'd not say sure, no I'm not sure I could ever live with it I don't know how the situation would arise though That'd be I'd say thing. no I don't think it's fair that not just me, but anyone who was put in that position. Why should you have to lose your life because there are ignorant people in the world? They should, mm. they should just stop being assholes <laughs> yeah. and stop being racist. Yeah, that's true. We well, shouldn't have to suffer for it. Uh, that is true. I do you're agree- not a racist. I do agree with you, but it's, it's almost like that thing of you know you could, 
if so here's a really random weird scenario that's just ridiculous and would never happen but I'm not having sex with you <laughs> to cure racism <Yeah. laughs> I'd have sex with you to cure racism I'd have sex with you to cure racism I'd have sex with you now anyway let's so. do it let's just not even turn off we'll the mic come back we'll just, to this mic. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like if if somehow your blood right could somehow make this weird chemical right which could be released in the atmosphere and for somehow it would just stop people being racist but it was only your blood they couldn't synthesize it and they needed all of your blood all eight pints and they needed it all in one go and it had to be done as one full drainage but they could kill you first so you wouldn't just be drained of all your blood while alive and it was like that's the only, that's your chance and it's like oh, that's a tough one well, no no it's it's the same question you're asking me to die to cure racism no <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I would. I, I feel like I should say yes, but if I was put in a quiet room and people would said you, no one will know if you've made this decision. I don't know what I'd say. Like I'm not saying I would or wouldn't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to say be a white knight. Yeah, I'd definitely say it because the situation never arises. I'm not going to lie about it because I could easily say I would do it. But it is a tough one because from what we know as fact, you only get one life on Earth. There could be afterlife. There could be reincarnation. There could be any of those things, and they could be a thing but we don't know therefore the one thing everyone unanimously knows for a fact is that there's this life at least yes that's that's what we know at the absolute least there's this life but i'd like to think there's reincarnation but if i'm being honest i don't think i don't believe in it yeah i'd love to think there was but i believe i'm starting to come to more terms of the fact that there's like an idea of um, (laughs) that your mind becomes one with the cosmos (laughs) yeah pretty much just like (laughs) we don't know what consciousness is you know and it's just we don't know what consciousness is, so it's like... If it's just, would be cool. That'd be cool. If, it, if it's just energy, if consciousness is just energy, then the energy can never be lost, it can only be redirected. Yeah. So, uh, excuse me. Um, so, maybe your consciousness could live on if it's a type of energy and it doesn't get dispersed. Maybe it could become another type of consciousness, another realm of reality. We don't know. But, it's unlikely, but we don't know. If you could be reincarnated, what would you like to come back as? I don't know, because you could choose like a, a fam, you could choose like a dog, and that'd be quite cool, just to hang out with the family. You'd have like a good, you know, 12 to 20 years with, yeah. generally speaking, as long as you weren't with people who are assholes. Also, people who hold with animals, what the fuck is up with that? How could, oh, but, but, this, I understand. this is something I don't like talking about. What's even but worse? Now like, I'll get angry. Well, it's one of those things, like, okay, if you're going to be racist, okay, that's horrible and awful and disgusting, but like... How can anyone beat up like or torture like dogs or kittens? So what's wrong with you? Like if you torture a human, that's horrendously disgusting and awful. Okay, yeah. but it's something about a, a, an animal which it can't even under. It's not even talking the same language as you. It don't even under, it doesn't understand. Oh, uh, my family got a game the other day. I think it's called Pick Your Poison. Right. <clears throat> it's like a a Cards Against Humanity kind of game, okay. but it's like a Would You Rather. So oh, okay. If it's your turn, you pick a card, and it will have something like I don't know. <laughs> something stupid like drink a family member's cum or something like that. <laughs> it, it's it's gross. Yeah. And we were playing the other day and someone picked one and it was <laughs> my sister's biggest fear mm. is uh being paralyzed but awake on an operating table. Oh god. And it was that was the card. It was being paralyzed so you can't like speak or shout out but being aware of an operation. <sighs> Jesus. Like a serious operation <laughs> and my sister loves animals like ridiculously loves animals and you basically have to put a card in and the the person whose turn it is has to match up which would be the most equal to make it the hardest choice yeah and my card won because i had the card of steamroll a herd of puppies not a herd of like a a load of puppies and my sister punched me (laughs) and almost cried because she didn't want to have to make the decision wow jesus yeah fuck could you steamroll puppies? No. If you had to. If you had to, buddy. In what way had to? If it was between being paralysed on an operating table... You have to steamroll these puppies. There are... Let's say there's eight puppies. The thing is, I'd, I'd probably take the operating table thing. If, if there was no chance of me dying or... Say some... If I was paralysed so it would hurt, but there was no chance of... Of me, whether or not I was paralysed and awake or paralysed or not, there was no way of changing the outcome of the operation or anything like that, I'd choose that. Because my own pain... And discomfort for X amount of time isn't worth, isn't equal to the life of eight puppies. Do you know what I mean? Okay, what if you had to kill and eat your best friend? I won't kill anyone for pain. It's like. Well, no, you, you have to make the choice. Steamroll eight puppies. Oh, I see. Or kill and eat your best friend. If we say, for the, like, I've got obviously you, Reese, Kieran, Callum, Josh, I'm, I, I feel like now I have to say everyone, but there's almost everyone who's really close to me. Most people we have on the, I'll have on this podcast, I imagine. Or I'll at least have most of my best friends on this podcast. So it's like. 
Okay, well, but if, well no, as, say, as I'm here, we'll I was say, say you. Me. That's what I mean. We'll I'll say, say me. I was going to say, I'll say you as an example. Kill and eat Ow. me or steamroll eight puppies. Oh, God. It's an easy choice. Well, it's not necessarily. It is, it's an easy choice as much as you would hate to do it. You, you'd you have to steamroll the puppies. I think I, w- I, I think I would choose the puppies because I... I would hate to do that, mm. but you, you'd have to. I, I think I would as well because the amount of pain that it would cause to those puppies dying and say the puppies had, hadn't been adopted by anyone, it was just... They were born, and that awful thing happened to them. That would suck. But the amount of mo- emotional pain that your death would bring about all the people who know you is so much more than the amount of pain that, of sort of the puppy thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how... Whenever I get confronted with these sorts of questions and situations, unfortunately I don't have to go in those situations very often, of that extreme, uh, those extremities, but it's always kind of like... It's always damage control. Is that which is going to cause the least amount of pain? Yeah. So with me on the top rank team, well, I'd choose that over killing puppies. I, mean, I feel like I answered the question quite easily. I just want to clarify: I do not and will not ever steamroll puppies. Well, don't say never because you might. What if? I, no, I won't. I I won't. Would do you steamroll eight puppies to cure racism? <coughs> no. Really? No, I'm not killing puppies. <laughs> I've kind of turned it around now, haven't I? I'm not sure. If... I I have a dog who is. One of my best friends. I love Tornak. He's, he's the best. He and... is a giant, like six foot husky, who's as oh, dumb so as good. fuck, but he's so lovable. I love that dog. Yeah, I'm he's really allergic to him, so very I can't, dumb. can't cuddle him very often because I just get all rashy. I cuddle him as often as I can. That's why you don't need a woman. That's not sexual. I don't mean, I don't mean <laughs> that way. I mean literally, like that's why whenever I talk about cuddling women, you like you, you like jokingly ridicule me because I I love cuddling. I just I'm such a cuddle monster because I'm. I mean, everyone I'm likes a cuddle, but, but you, you get a cuddle off your dog. I don't. <laughs> I don't get cuddles off no one, which is a double negative. Do you want um, a cuddle? You, I always want a cuddle. But I think I hugged you. No, it's normally it's weird though because I always pick you up in the car and obviously you don't hug when you get in the car and I normally kind of half hug when you leave. I have to have a hug after the podcast. I, I always a hugging though, you know. I live with Reese, and I just occasionally, every now and then, I'd be like, just have a hug. <laughs> it's just like, I'm a very huggable person. You're a strange guy, Mike. I am. I have been told that a lot of times. I don't know. I, a lot of the time, I prefer hugs to uh, cuddle. Like, if it was like cuddling a woman, right, like proper cuddles in, in like bed and naked and stuff, I prefer that to sex most of the time. You say a proper cuddle is having to be naked? No, no, I mean, like, I mean, a proper cuddle like a, a proper <laughs> like a snuggly wuggly fest I'd probably say if we said a snuggle was like a naked cuddle with someone that you love and then a cuddle can just be fully clothed laying, laying down or sat mm. or something I suppose there's, that... like a, there's like a hug a hug's just like a over in 10 seconds sort of thing there's like a cuddle which is like if you if me and you like lay on the sofa and watched a movie that, and that'd be cuddling do you know what I mean yeah. it's not hugging necessarily you know and I think snuggling is the, sort of the next step behind that I guess so hmm Snuggling, then. I, I literally... You like a snuggle. Especially post-sex. Once you've had sex, and then there's none of that, like, sexual energy left or anything like that, and you just get that kind of... I know you don't like cuddling much after sex, but it's just like... I <laughs> the, love it. The only reason I don't really like cuddling after sex is because after the act of sex, Mike, I'm very hot. I'm hot and, and sweaty and gross. I do not want to have someone else's hot sweaty skin on my hot sweaty skin because it's uncomfortable i get that i understand that if, if you give me five minutes to go in you know cool down <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know if you give it five minutes just yeah. so you can you know compose yourself and yeah. then go and cuddle in bits is that wipe wipe the the sweat that's dripping off your nipples i thought you were going to say something else then no uh wipe, I've, I've had to do that before well my, pretty much every time i have sex i think i have to <laughs> wipe myself down with a towel or something it's so gross I should be more fit as well I've been going to the gym for quite a while now I still manage to sweat loads it's just, any woman that has sex with me I feel so bad for it's just gross I remember <laughs> one of my exes I think she she told you about it once and having a laugh about it where we are having sex back in the early days when I was a lot more overweight as well and I was like dripping <laughs> Like sweat onto her. I just didn't want to say anything because it's like. But afterwards, I remember her saying to me, "She's like, you're dripping sweat on me a lot." I was like, "I know, I'm gross. I'm so sorry." (laughs) I've never ever dripped sweat during sex. I've I've got drips off my chin. It's just gross. I've got to the point where, like, you know, where you get the sticky sweat, the glaze. Yeah, the your glaze. (laughs) It is the glaze, isn't it? It's literally like where your arms, like, it's not dripping off your arm, but your arm's got this layer of sweat. You touch it as well. I get that when I go to the gym. I get arm glaze. Gross. It is so gross. gross. I'm a pretty gross human being. It's, it's, you know, some people who've, uh, who've like been uh, listening to this podcast who've never seen me in person don't know who I am. 
I don't know what they imagine I look like. He's fingering his belly button right now. He's gonna eat I could do it. Oh, please don't. Oh, dude. <laughs> I think... Don't I, do it. I had a shower last night, so... I don't think I've got any lint in there. Oh, no, there's a bit of lint because I'm wearing a black top. There you go. That's gross. It's not that gross. It'd be gross if I ate it. Please. Oh, oh, not oh no. Oh, he ate it. Oh, that's gross. Fuck you, Bradley. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, what was I saying? We were talking about sweating <laughs> sex See, like... I feel like this is the problem with you and me doing one of these podcasts is because with other people you seem to have like a core a core topic to talk about so you can even if you go off track you can go mm. back to that topic but with the gubbins that we're talking oh god yeah it is true it, it, the problem is though is it's because part of it is also in the podcast format if we if me and you having a conversation normally like not recording it if the conversation comes to like, finishes if it stops for I don't know, 20 seconds and while we're doing something else or we've just got our phones or whatever, just for like 20 seconds before we think of something else to say, it's fine. It's not awkward between us. But on a podcast, if you have 20 seconds of silence, either I'll have to edit out, which is a nuisance. Yeah, but that's time for people to go and like have a shit. I'd like to think people would have a shit while listening to this. That'd be nice. While they're listening to it. I listen to podcasts while on the shit. Especially in the house. If someone's in the house, I don't I play really loud heavy music so they can't hear me go. You run the shower so no one can hear the plop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I put, I put the toilet roll down first so there's no splash and plop. But uh, So they can't hear any noises that my body may or may not make. <laughs> I always, if, if you notice, I'll, I'll almost always play music when I go in the, sh- the, the toilet anyway, whether I'm urinating or, or excreting. But if I'm going number twos, I, it, it, that's why I don't like going in public very often. If you're in public in like West Key or something... when well, there's Because like, of the sound? Yeah, I don't like people being able to hear me. I'm really funny about it. It's just a normal thing. Everyone, yeah, everyone know. takes I, a crap. If I hear anyone else, I got no problem. I don't care. I find it funny. Well, that's that's because you're normal. <laughs> <laughs> I just I've, <laughs> I'm just I don't know. I I've never found farts funny either. I'm one of those guys. <sighs> no, I I don't find farts funny. I find situational farts funny. Some of them are. Yeah, there's there's certain times where a fart can be funny. Yeah. Where it's like really awkward and everyone's like quiet. I mean, yeah. If if we're sat here now out. and you suddenly just went. <laughs> I, I wouldn't find it funny. Well, no, it's not funny, is it? It's just a... Mm, yummy. Now this room is going to smell slightly worse for a few minutes. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. It's fun, isn't it? Because if you, when you inhale and you smell someone's poop, you're actually inhaling poo particles. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. Do you want to think about how many strangers poo Who particles does? you've had in your nose? I don't want to. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Um, well, it's like people say, yeah, you know, having, having toothbrushes in bathrooms, you should always have them in the cabinet. because when Yeah, you well, I keep them. my toothbrush in my room. Why, why is that funny? <laughs> I just imagine you do something really weird dodgy with it. <laughs> no, because I don't want poo particles going on my bristles. That makes sense. Yeah, I think about, I keep thinking about it, but I keep not doing anything about it. We haven't That's got... why your breath smells like shit. <laughs> That's one of the contributing reasons. I do also eat shit. So, you know, I like How's to... It taste? Shitty. It tastes <laughs> sweet corny. I, I like poop, and then I put like a lollipop stick in there and then put it in the freezer. <laughs> Randy just took a drink and he always like choked on it. Thanks, thanks for that, Mike. That was the, that was the hope I was having you choke. You get, you know, it's like um, you get like a nice <laughs> a chud lollipop, and you take a bite out of chud? it. Chud, yeah. And you take what the fuck is a chud lollipop? <laughs> a chud is like another word for a crap, like a nice meaty chud. I, I've never heard anyone call a really? shit a chud. Really? No. <laughs> oh god. Oh, well, I don't know. I've I've heard people call it before chud, but yes, a meaty chud. No. Well, like, is, am I the weirdo here? I don't I've know, never I, heard that. The thing is, though, there's so many words you can say for shit. you got to think, like, there's so many words that there's, like, shit, fuck, I like snagger. Something. Snagger? Yeah. That sounds like, like a vagina. Like when you say, I cut off a snagger. What? You've never, I think I think it might be an Australian thing, but don't hold me on that. I might be wrong. <laughs> well, these Australian listeners <clears> saying, <throat> Oi, mate! Oh, that was terrible. Had a snagger. Ugh. Snagger. Snagger. Well, yeah. <laughs> Snagger, but... Snagger. Snagger sounds like... I don't know if it just makes me think of, like, slag, which means like a slut, and then vagina, but snagger. Yeah. Well, snagger just makes it... It's like cooch. Snatch. It makes cooch. Me cooch. Snatch. Snagger. Snagger sounds like a vagina. We're just saying random words now. You've never heard plum bumble. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like the clitoris. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> the clitoris being the plum bumble. Plum bumble. The plum bumble. That's what the little bean of the clitoris would be called. <laughs> the plum bumble. <laughs> <laughs> renaming, oh renaming genitals. Let's let's go for it. Slagger for the vagina. <laughs> the, uh, the plum. <laughs> what was it? Plum bumble. Plum bumble for the clitoris. 
I can't, I can't even think of anything else more. I just can't think of my favourite website name, MikeBurtonsBeefCurtains.com. If I ever became a porn star, that'd be it. Oh, I, th- I thought you meant you would actually sell something. <laughs> what, like beefy curtains? No, not well, actual beef cur- curtains. Curtains just smell like bacon. Well, bacon's pork, so that was terrible. Yeah, like a scratch and sniff curtain. Yeah. Mike Burton's beef be, curtains. Yeah, that'd be horrible. <laughs> Imagine having... <laughs> Smelling beef in your, your oh, lounge God, every, every day. Like, like old burger. Like when you when you cook burgers in the in the kitchen or whatever, and then you um you don't air it out enough and it just stinks of work. Or you accidentally forget to wash out the fat, and then you oh. take it out the next day and it's just a lump and you smell it. Yeah, and then you the eat gristle. it. <laughs> Scrape it up with a card and sniff it. <laughs> sniff the line of fat. Spread it on a crumpet. Oh, I've said that about before about dick cheese. Just the worst thing in the world. Like someone scraping dick cheese off and putting it on a cracker. Oh, what's wrong with you? What's right with me? The, the, all the podcasts up to this point, everyone's thought I'm a fairly normalish guy. But when things go off the rails, that's the problem. Yeah, he's not a normal guy at all. <laughs> How dare you? You're meant to be one of my. You're my heterosexual life partner. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> he hates it when I call him that. Every single time. I love introducing we go you, out. I love you introducing you to women like that as well. It just cracks me up. He is so embarrassed. <laughs> it's not embarrassment. It's just a weird thing to say. That's why it's so funny. It's like where I called you Care Bear for a while, and it was just yeah. Like, every even our friends. But I only we, said it. We were weirded out by it. I said it once in passing as a joke, and then all our friends got so bothered by it. I was like, I have to keep saying it because it's so. It's such a minor thing. It's like your name's Bradley. And you occasionally get called the bear because you're like a big. Yeah, cat. can you clarify? Because you're a bit. Oh means. yeah, not gay bear like that. But he's Bradley's a big dude, and he's very hairy, and he's like a cuddly bear. My mum, if she ever talks to, about you to anyone, yeah, I know. Always, she, she goes, "Ah, oh, Bradley's lovely. He's so sweet and polite. He's like a big cuddly bear." <laughs> I think TJ said that on the podcast as well, actually. Really? Think, yeah, because we spoke about you, didn't we? Because um, oh. yeah, because obviously this podcast is being recorded only. I think it's only been about. What was it? I saw TJ not Saturday, just gone the Saturday uh, before this. It's been a, I only recorded the podcast with TJ about a week and a half before this. But the T- TJ's one's the the next one being released after Mime of Reese. Oh. So it's like I've got part one of TJ's, part two of TJ's, part one of Alex's, part two of Alex's, and then probably this one. So it's actually going to be like you know five weeks from the first one, I imagine. <clears throat> but that's one of the reasons why I haven't said at the start of the episode, this is episode four or whatever, you know, because... There's not a set... With with TJ's and Alex, I did, but I realised that, for example, this conversation, as fun as it is, if if there's like a band that want to be interviewed or something, or, or someone that's got something up and coming, I'd obviously put theirs before this one because there's no oh hell no, there's no time relevance to this one. So it's like whereas with like band ones, if it, if there's a band who come on and say, look, we're having our EP release then, and this gig we're having this gig then, I have to release it before that time. I do want to stockpile episodes, but I don't want to. I can't be too regimented with it because then everything will be delayed by like seven weeks. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's why on the recording schedule. Obviously, I think I'm recording another one in two days, so that'd be fun. Um, Boo! God, we were talking about what well, snagger? Why? Oh, we're talking <coughs> no, about shitting. You, do not go back to the conversation <laughs> about the plum bumbers. <laughs> plum bumble? Is it plum bumble or plum bumbers? Uh, either or. I think whichever plum takes bumbers. Your fancy. Plum bumbers sounds more like a Harry Potter term for the Clarus. Oh, Leviosa or my Clum Bumbus. <laughs> like a Harry Potter spell? I don't know, because no, it's the Bumble bit at the end that makes it... Well, not Bumble, it was... Plum Bumble Leviosa. <laughs> Plum Bumble Leviosa. Yeah, raise the clitoris. <laughs> <not> lift a <laughs> woman up by her clitoris. I saw a picture... It just reminded me, I saw a picture of Harry Potter... Uh, like a Harry Potter meme today. Yeah. And it was just a picture of Hermione saying, Harry, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Did he say fetus deletus? Yeah, fetus deletus. Love it. It made me giggle. I think there's that one which uh, which you absolutely died about when it was the picture of Ron and Hermione on the train, and where she's oh. she has a go at him for. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is it? I'm she's... gonna have to, I'm gonna have to find it because I'm gonna. Where <laughs> he's like, I'll hook you in the gabber, you cunt, or something yeah, like that. that. Uh, Ron, me, oh. hook you in the gabber. I've got to find this because it's just... It's the scene. I think it's the scene where they bought all the stuff off the trolley. Yeah, because obviously he's like, Harry's food. really rich. Harry's got loads of money, hasn't he? And he's yeah. just like he's, he's got all the silver sickles. He just buys like one of everything. It's like <laughs> he's like, we'll take the lot. Well, I remember we even watching that when I was like ten or eight or whoever old I was. I mean, oh, like, dude, Daniel like, Radcliffe's acting in the first movie is horrendous. It, it's it's certainly not perfect. Um, I can't find the meme. I think it's gone forever. No. Hey, girl, just wanted to let you know your little ones loves you. And there's a picture of Ryan Gosling topless. Look at that. It's not even a meme. It's like an inspirational poster. It's just a picture. It's just literally, guys, I'm looking at a topless picture of Ryan Gosling. Not Ryan Gosling, it's Ryan Reynolds. Um, and it just says, hey girl, just want to let you know, dot, 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 your little, your little loves you. What? 
Yeah, your little loves you. <laughs> your little loves you. That's why I said Ryan Gosling, because it says Ryan Gosling hitting on girls with feminist theory, but there's a picture of Ryan Reynolds. So I was getting so confused. My inspiration is Roger. Roger the kangaroo. What? You've never... Oh my god, you've never seen Roger the buff kangaroo. Isn't that like what, just the kang... Kangaroos generally do have six packs. Fucking dude. Yeah, they're scary. I think it's, it's just... Called... Look at that, man. That's... Yeah, they're... Like a lot of kangaroos look like that. They will kill you. If they... any of you haven't seen Roger the kangaroo, look him up. He's like... Wait, he's Roger the buff kangaroo. He's built... It's mental. Well, kangaroos are dense. They're like so... There we go. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They will kill you. They will fuck you up. Kangaroos are dangerous. I've also found the meme. Roger folding a metal bucket in half. The meme. And it's, it's the three pictures. It's a picture of like, Hermione doing her like slightly disappointed face on the uh, on the train. And it's like, but Ron, that chocolate's mine. You better shut your mouth, you cheeky little cunt. I swear to Christ, I'll hook you in the gabba, mate. And there's just her face looking <laughs> yeah. disappointed. I remember when you found that. Oh, you thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Yeah, but I, it happened with the Doge meme as well. Yeah, but the Doge meme was pretty good. <coughs> See, Just, is it Doge or Doge? Because Tom says Doge. It's it's Doge, isn't it? I thought it was Doge. Who says Doge? Tom. Other, other than Tom. No one. Sorry, Tom, I love you, but... We all love Tom. Tom's a good guy. Good guy. Um, <laughs> I just can't Kanye stop West. thinking... Uh, sorry? It's just reminded me of Kanye West. In what, what, in what regard? Uh, South Park. Oh, what, the, the yeah. gay fish one or the, the hobbit one? No, the hobbit one. I love you too. <laughs> hey, bitch. <laughs> like, bitch you a you hobbit? better tell me if you're the hobbit. Bitch, you better tell me if you're a hobbit. <laughs> the bitch ain't a hobbit. Yeah, she went on a magical adventure with a wizard. <laughs> yeah, she lives in the hole. <laughs> she smokes a pipe. <laughs> Wait a minute. Bitch, you a hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you best tell me if you're the hobbit. <laughs> oh, man. Is the new South Park any good? Uh, Is it, are these <clears> all story related again? Well, there's only been one episode out of the new series. But... Well, did it continue? I think it continued on from the last one. Isn't it? It's got the member berries. No, there's no member berries in it. It, it has continued to the fact that, like, like, uh, you know, Cartman gets the girlfriend. Yeah. Where he's like, girls are super funny and super cool or something. Oh, if girls are super funny and super smart yeah. and super cool, uh, if... he's he's still with that girl in the new oh, okay. episode. Yeah, I'm interested. So it is like a carry on, but I, I like I did like the last two seasons where it's been a consistent story. But my my favorite seasons were probably the two seasons before that, which were the gluten free ones. And the the World War uh, the Game of Thrones ones. The, those two, I can't the Game the of Thrones trilogy was awesome. But it's like those the season that had the Game of Thrones trilogy, in, and I think the one after that with the gluten free stuff. I think I might be getting them mixed up. Is um where each episode generally is individual. There's a couple of mini arcs, like two part episodes or three part episodes. But generally, it's like each episode is own episode, but it's got conti- it's, it's like it's like another day in South Park, but yeah, it continues they, they from the previous day. Previous episodes. exactly. Whereas like in you watch season one to ten. And just there's random the, events. There's the odd time where there's like there's a couple of episodes where they mention you know when Barbara Stry Barbara Streisand attacked or when Carmen yeah. had an anal probe. They, they do they do occasionally mention it, but that's like vague referencing. Whereas when it's like ten episodes and they reference like things happen in episode two that affect episode eight or something, but not like to such a degree that the new ones do. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I just got something about what was it Plum Bumble? Pl- plum Bumbus. Plum. See, or it plum changes Bumble. every time. It, I don't know. It changes every time you say it. It's just a word. But the, don't you think it sounds Harry Potterish? Because things Harry Potter end in us or umble, it's like Dumbledore. Uh, well, that doesn't end in umble, does it? It, it starts. All. It starts in umble. Dumbledore. No, no, no. <laughs> Potter puppet pals. Um, I just want to think of something. Now I'm thinking of fetus deletus. <laughs> You're so bad. You're a bad person. <laughs> what? How dare you laugh at abortion? It's a serious. I'm not laughing at abortion. I'm laughing at a funny meme. How dare you? Shut up, Mike. There's a lot of people who are offended by this. I'm sorry for anyone who is offended by this. I was saying this to Reese the other day. <clears throat> I think I said it on the podcast with Reese, where we, so I won't go into detail again. But it's just like people, people have to. There's there's a line in there can't be a line with when it's jokes. Do you know what I mean? Like I think no joke should be censored because I agree. because once you censor, what I've got into this in the other podcast, but you know, once you censor one thing, you have to censor everything because everyone gets offended. However, there's I think me and Reese were talking about this last night, and it's uh, you have to have balance of like. If there's someone who's close to you and, I don't know, they've say something horrendous, like they've had a miscarriage or you know something proper bad with like a kid or something, you don't make jokes about miscarriages around them. That's just being a dick, you know? It's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get offended if people made jokes about people dying of cancer, even though obviously that's how dad died. I, I wouldn't get offended by that because it doesn't really bother me in that way. But you just shouldn't do that sort of thing around people, you know? It, it's, it's, yeah, it's, if, if you're someone who's <clears throat> affected by it or you're around someone who's affected by 
the the thing you're joking about, then yeah. just don't joke about it. It's it's not hard not. Yeah, to. exactly. It's like I think uh, Reese was saying we were talking about um, the Ariana. Do you remember the Ariana Grande concert in Manchester and obviously yes. people were killed and stuff? And there were people on Facebook making jokes about it, like the day after it happened. It's just like that's so not cool. You know, it's like there's a time and a place. If you go to a comedy show, okay, and they make jokes about say nine eleven right now, right? Nine nine eleven was not funny. Obviously not, but it's been you know like sixteen years or something, so it's kind of been enough time where if you go to a comedy show and there's an especially uh, offensive comedian and you know someone like Jimmy Carr or someone like that, and they make offensive jokes and they make an offensive joke about nine eleven, you can expect that. If you're at a family meal, there's twenty of you, and you make a joke, and then your auntie Doris has had a miscarriage recently, and you make a joke about that, that just means you're an asshole because it's just not, it's not being looking out for them. And with the Ariana Grande thing. Making jokes about an Ariana Grande concert and where children and people died the day after isn't funny. And it was like, I think me and Reese kind of said, an offensive joke can only be okay if it's actually funny. You know, I don't believe racist yeah. jokes generally are very funny. I don't know if I've ever, I'm not going to say I've never heard one that isn't funny because I probably have heard one that's funny, you know. But there's, there has to be a time and a place and also it has to be enough funny, you know. If you make a joke about an Ariana Grande concert, okay, and the children dying in it, okay, because it's so raw and recent, it better be the funniest fucking joke in the world, or you're a cunt. Do you know what I mean? That yeah, soon after. No, I agree. But it's... obviously, when it's on Facebook, it's difficult. On Facebook, people don't go on Facebook to see jokes, you know? So you're making it... People who may be really sensitive about that sort of thing, or even, you can argue, checking on Facebook to make sure their families are okay who went to their concert, they see some asshole making a joke about it, that's not funny. But if you're if you're on a website which is all jokes, like Sycopedia, they're obviously going to make jokes about 9-11 because you go on a website, to a, an offensive joke website, to be offended by those jokes. Yeah, but people don't get that, do they? There will still be people who actively seek out that to to be offended. People people do. They seek out being offended. It's a term that I don't I don't believe Joe Rogan came up with this term. I think someone he knows came up with this term, but I may be mistaken, and it's called recreational outrage. It's when people will mm. seek out being angry by things, you know, yeah. being angered and triggered by things. But there's a lot of... I find it's more so people on the left who do it more. I don't believe there are more people on the left who complain about stuff necessarily, but I think there's more people on the left who go out and find their way to complain about things, you know? Yeah, totally. I, I, I think that the, amount, the percentage of people on the left and the percentage of people on the right who are pains in the ass is probably quite even. That's why I stay on the up. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't even think of any. I couldn't think of anything to your say. Your face, your face just, just went straight to me. You were like, "What the just fuck did you just say?" Dead neutral. I can. I thought you were gonna say something else. Um, I thought you could say like the center or something. Cause I'm, no, I'm, I just wanted to stop you in your tracks. I'm quite center left, I'd say. But um, yeah. It, <clears throat> it, it, so when you know, obviously we've made jokes. Uh, you know, I've made a joke about black people, and I made a joke about this and that. Obviously, racist or anything like that. But it's just so hard. Especially in today's society, where it's just like if you get labelled a racist, it's so hard to like lose that label in a sense. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. if, if someone calls you racist, even though you're not racist, you've never done anything racist. Trying to convince people you're not a racist is basically a paradox. Well, yeah, if it's people you don't know. The worst thing is when if someone when you're like not angry about something and someone tells you like why are you get so angry about this and you're like oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. not. There's once they've said calm down or you're getting too angry about this. There's no reaction you can have where you almost don't prove them right in a sense. But you, yeah. not intentionally, it's like... You, you could be as calm as anything. You'd be like, no, no, honestly, I'm not angry. And they're like, look, seriously, I, I know what you're doing. You're, you're angry. You're like, no, no, seriously, I'm not angry. And they, they still think you're getting angry. Yeah. You're like, honestly, no. Yeah, so like, I'm not getting angry. And then if you raise your voice slightly, it's like, same you told you're getting angry. It's like, yeah, because... You've been bothering me for the last two or three like, minutes. So you're now. getting angry. Yeah. And it's like, yes, okay. I'm not angry. I'm angry now. Yes, I'm fucking made me angry. Christ. Don't ever tell someone to calm down when they're getting angry. Oh, God. Well, don't ever tell me. Sometimes I oh, need to. Oh, God, no, not you. Sometimes I need to be told to calm down, but. I just call you a cunt. Yeah. I get that a lot. Did you ever have it in uh, relationships where you you got insulted a lot by the woman, and then if you ever insulted them, they just lost it? Um, I'm not saying that this is universal. I'm just curious. I was talking to someone about I mean, this the other day. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Nothing that comes to the, to mind specifically, but yeah, I mean, I'm just curious in relationships. Just probably. I'm not saying this is necessarily a woman or man thing. Uh, I'm just saying, with me, some of the women I've been with in relationships, when we've been arguing about something, they've called me a cunt, an asshole, a dick, or anything like that, and I, I, I'm pretty certain I've, I've almost never. I'd say. I'd probably say maybe a couple of times I might have called someone a bitch, but I'm, I'm pretty, pretty certain I haven't. 
I, I generally don't want to get argue. I try not to do too much name calling of that caliber, especially in a relationship because it just comes back to haunt you. But it um, wasn't name calling and stuff with me. It, for me, it was more wind ups. Right. Like so, so they they would wind me up and do everything they could to wind me up, yeah. and then I'd bite and get annoyed, and they'd be like, "Ah, yeah, don't get so annoyed." And then you'd do it once to them, oh. and then they'd immediately get annoyed, and you'd be in the wrong. Yep. Yeah, I've been there. <clears throat> It, it, I've been both there and, and the and the thing where you know they call you this that the other and then you say oh, why do you have to be such a bitch and then then like, they, excuse they, me then you know that the whole atmosphere just changes and someone like just sucked all the light out of the room and they look at you and you look at them and you're like <laughs> I should not have fucking said that and they just storm out the room like crying and you're like oh come on you called me a cunt like ten times last minute I called you a bitch once and now I'm the bad guy and then you have to apologise but they never have to apologise for calling you a cunt it's probably because I am a cunt to be honest you are a cunt yeah that's true. <laughs> It's just one of those weird things. The problem is with me is I bite so easily. Yeah, yeah, you do. I don't as much as I used to in college. College was the worst. Y- you you were a lot worse in college than you are now. Oh, yeah. You were... like, for, fuck, for that, Jesus Christ, I was 16 then. I'm 23 now. Christ, I, I'm glad I've oh, <laughs> grown no. a bit. Huh. Well, you were about to say something and I laughed. Well, I just called you an old man. You called me an old man. I'm like six months older than you. Yeah, but you're still older than me. Yeah. Um... It's funny though, isn't it? Because if you were born, what was it like a week later? No, I think it's two weeks later, isn't it? And you would have been in a different school year, or is it just September? No, yeah, no. I think if I was because I just made the cut for my year because I'm yeah. I'm sort of just before mid August. Yeah. So yeah, I think a week later they wouldn't have allowed me into the year, and I would have been a year younger. That's and I would never have met you, Mike. Yeah. Well, you might. You <clears throat> might have done. Maybe. I doubt it. I doubt we would have met. Yeah, I think it's probably quite unlikely because I, I imagine my friend group would have been pretty much the same in college, but obviously you wouldn't have been there. But you'd have met a lot of different people. Yeah, I would. Uh, plus, I I know the people that went to my school. Yeah. And the people that were the year under us in college. Oh. Okay. So if I had to mingle with those, yeah, a lot of them wouldn't have mingled with us. Well, when we were in college, it w- with me, uh, whenever I've had a group of friends or anything, we're not usually the mingling type. I am. No, you, no, I'm not an individual. I mean, like, when we were in college, especially college is quite clicky as well. So, you know, like, there were the group of us. It was like me, you, and I'm not going to name everyone, there's no point. But, you know, there was that group of like 10 of us or so. Yeah. And if, if anyone else, if anyone came and was like, oh, this is my mate, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, cool, come sit down. But it wasn't like our whole group would mingle with another whole group. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah. It was only when that core group of friends left our parties or something, then you'd invite more. But it's just the groups, you kind of... They don't mix. So I imagine if you were in a different friend group in um, college, I don't think any of us in second in second year. I don't think any of us took anything that was in first year except me, who took RS, which is religious studies. And obviously, you didn't take RS. So no, well, <clears throat> well, in first year of college, I I was in a different friendship group to you. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> My friendship group used to sit near yours at like lunch and stuff. Yeah, but the person who brought me into your group was Kira, wasn't it? Yeah, Kieran is funny because Kieran's the only person I think of all my friends who is never going to come on the podcast. Oh, really? He just never wants to. Which fine. Oh. It's, it's both. It's completely done to him. He, he's I love not Kieran. Everyone loves. Everyone yeah, loves. Yeah, he's Kieran. he's the whole reason that you and me are friends now. Yeah. Because we, do you remember? Because our business studies teacher in college got that... so angry with everyone in the class that she made a seating plan. Is that Jenny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and she just sat me next to Kieran. Yeah. And we ended up becoming friends and then he was like do you want to come and hang out with my friends at lunch and I was like yeah go on then yeah and I and came over and me... I met you Reese. well things you already knew me vaguely anyway because we were in the same yeah you were the weirdo who everyone hated in every single <laughs> class well let me think we were in we were in accounting together yeah. but I wasn't the weirdo in that class because there's no Eamon no would... Eamon yeah. wouldn't give us <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, we had this accounting teacher, and he's a lovely guy. And if he ever hears this, I'm very sorry, but uh, he's he's a lovely guy, and he was a fairly good teacher. It's just that oh, he was a great teacher. He had this weird thing where he would always go and yeah all the time. Like if he was talking to you, like he'd be go like, <clears throat> okay, class. So uh, yeah, turn to page three, and then um, and once I remember specifically where he said where everyone turned to page yeah, and everyone just stared yeah. at each other, <laughs> yeah, and we were I all like, that. we were all like, and he was like. Go on then, turn to page 60. And we're like, okay. And it was just like, <laughs> we were like, God, oh God, he said it. Yeah, thank God for that. Otherwise, if if he said to us, why aren't you doing it? It's like, if I'm glad you didn't pick one of us and say, why didn't you do it? It's like, oh no, please. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I, got, I don't want to bring it up. Someone's got a mild speech impediment or something, but it's just that like, that moment was just awkward. It's like, oh. 
oh no. <laughs> so funny. He was a good teacher, though. He was a cool guy. Yeah. He congratulated me on not getting a U in accounting. He was proud of me for not failing in accounting. That's how bad I was at accounting. <laughs> was like, we were in the accounting class together, we were in business class together, we were in psychology together, and I wasn't your tutor for the first month or so. Then yeah, they... then we stopped going. No, because they changed tutor, didn't they? they? Did they? Yeah, well, I... I, 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 I never went to tutor, I went to, like, two. I think in the first year, I, I was either in Eamon's class and I moved to Jenny's, or vice versa, I think. Or maybe I was in... No, I was in Raphael's tutor, actually, the psychology teacher. But I think I was in Jenny's or Eamon's first, for, like, a month, and then I moved. Yeah. I didn't choose to move, I can't remember what happened. But, um... Yeah, because I was, I was in your... Psychology class was the main one where everyone thought I was a weirdo. Media class, a lot of people thought I was weird. And then business... Business wasn't that weird. It was just kind of... It was me, Kieran Reese. Then it was the... You sat opposite me, didn't you? Yeah, because it was the U shape, wasn't it? Yeah, because you gave me the nickname Stoner Gary. Stoner Gary. That's because we knew a guy in uh, in secondary school called Gary. And he's a lovely guy. And you at the time looked quite a lot like him. But we called you Stoner Gary because the stereotype of Stoner is a bit of facial hair... And long hair. That, that, that's, so we were just like, Stoner Gary. Just like the nickname. Because we gave everyone a nickname in that class because we were terrible people. Some of the nicknames we gave people were very bad and I'm not going to repeat them. But oh, I got to sit next to Lewis. Do oh, yeah. Lewis Dipper. I don't remember Lewis Dipper. I see him on Facebook occasionally now. Yeah. What a hero. I haven't spoken to him in years. I spoke to him about two years ago. Uh, yeah, it was in Burgess Road, so it must be two years ago. Maybe a year and a half ago. And I saw him in Halfords. He sorted out my light or something. Um, I was like, he was like, oh, I want to hang out with you guys again. And I was like, yeah, sure, man, go ahead. And I was like, we organised a day where he was going to come over and Reese was around. Um, well, Reese was living with me, obviously. And me and Reese were going to hang out with him a little bit. Um, it was going to be like an evening thing. And then on the day, in the morning, I messaged him and said, oh, dude, you're gonna, we're going to hang out. And he just didn't respond. And I was like, okay. And that's it. Oh. Just never. And I was like, Aww. I was like, I'm not going to make an effort because I, the guy was all right, you know, but that, that did kind of piss me off a bit. I was like, you know, he was like saying how much he really wanted to hang with us. And I was like, okay, cool, you can hang with us then. And then he just never responded or anything like that. And I was just like, if you don't want to hang, you could just you don't have to lie to me, or you could have just said, you know, yeah. I don't know. Well, but, that sucks. Yeah, but it was like, um, yeah, because in in business class, it was just it, it was the cool, quote unquote cool kids who were just always talking in the class. Yeah, it was the people at the back who see. I don't get that. If you're going to go to college do the lessons you've gone to a higher education you've also chosen it's yeah. not like school you've chosen forced. you chose all four of the classes don't mess around although I can't say anything because in in my first year of college I didn't do well at all I think I got E's in all of my exams on AS level yeah and then I didn't go to my second year of college and I spent the year doing stupid things yeah, but there is a bit more to the story than that. I don't know if you want to share it, but you don't have to we'll, share. We'll leave that. Yeah, that's fine. We'll leave it for uh, potentially, <laughs> potentially future or another time. But there, perhaps there, next time. There were other things going on behind the scenes, which meant that you wouldn't come in and stuff. We yeah. won't go into that. But it's like um, the thing is also the problem with college is when you're sixteen, when you're between sixteen and eighteen. Okay, that's when a lot of people primarily start getting into sexual relationships and start getting into relationships they think are proper adult relationships, which is like, you know. Not to downplay anyone who's in a proper relationship at my age now, but I'd say a, almost like a, a... What's it now? I was going to say a true adult relationship when you live with a person, but I don't think that's actually the case. I think no, I, 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 no, that's I, true. No, I retract that. There's a lot of adult relationships with people that live with each other. It's more like when you both have proper jobs, I'd say. When you're... Or at least... One who's maybe in uni and stuff. It's kind of when you've got your own money. That, that's I think When that's, you buy a cat. <laughs> I think it's when you have your own money. That's when it truly becomes like an adult relationship. Because when you're like 15... You can't do anything. You can't drive. You can't. You barely have any money, and you can't really do much together. So it's kind of like the relationship gets stifled by lack of opportunity. But when you're like 23, like me now, I haven't got loads of money, but I can go out for a meal occasionally. If I save up a bit, I can go on holiday. There's these things I can drive. So it's literally just like, do you want to go to London for a weekend? Okay, I'll just drive up there. You know, when you're a kid, it's just like when you're 15, you don't have as much money, you don't have as much life experience. Do you want to go bowling? I'll get my mum to drop us. That was that did happen. Those are the days. I mean, I suck at bowling. I didn't. When I was 15, I was sitting in parks and drinking cider. I think I was doing 15. <clears throat> I was a terrible child. I was drinking Not a bit. Child. I think me, Reese, and Kieran were, were drinking a bit when we were 15. It was more, more when we were 16, 17, though, sort of age. Yeah. Um, more than anything. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, in, in college, um, the problem is, is you, you get, you introduce people to, 16 is generally the age people start drinking. Obviously, a lot of people start drinking 14, but 16 is kind of like, 
almost the universal age where generally people start to drink. You know what I mean? Like, you're 16 to 18. But mm-hmm. you start to drink. You start having sexual relationships with people. And obviously, everyone around you starts talking about sex and having sex and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, th- that happens and you, you kind of feel like an adult. But then you, you're like, yeah, I can make my own life choices. And you've been in education your entire life. You have no idea what the outside world is truly like because you, you at the best, you've had, like, maybe a part-time job. But if you're 16, you probably haven't. Maybe if you're... If you go into college, like Kieran, he worked at the range while um, while we were at college. And yeah, like, I worked at Tesco's when I was in college. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. So some people do have part-time jobs while they're in college, but that's when you're 16, 17. That's after you've already chosen your qualifications. Yeah. How can you possibly know what you want to do for the rest of your life as a job if you've never had a job? Does it make any sense? It's like it's like saying to someone, okay, um, who's never seen a horror film, choose your favourite. It's like, <laughs> I haven't seen any. I don't, I don't know. How can I possibly tell you what I like about any of these things? It's just, yeah. Oh, I, I think going back to being an adult I think the moment you become an adult is the moment that you make your own doctor's appointment oh god yeah that is that's pretty true that was when I moved like before I moved away from home I think mum did make me do it eventually I think I moved out actually no I moved out I was 20 I was definitely doing it before then because I, I changed my doctor's surgery and I think I was 18 or 19 when I did that I'm, I'm a bit different because obviously dad died when I was still at home and that changed dynamics quite a lot but I'd say yeah it, it's a I think it's around 18-ish. Once you can drink, once you can... Like, I'm not saying every 18-year-old is, like, a proper adult. But once you can start going out to bars without anyone else, and you can just choose to drink, then it's kind of... That's where the maturity kind of lies, and that's where a bit of, like, fake maturity comes from, in a way. You know what I mean? Like, um... Well, not fake, but you think you're mature when you're not. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like, when... when everyone does this. If any 18-year-olds listening to this or anything like that... I know you think you're mature, but you're probably not. Just, not to insult anyone, I'm not as mature no, as I, you know. It's just part of life, isn't it? I mean, I, I think I'm mature-ish now, yeah. but I'm definitely still childish in a lot of ways. I think most adults are. I just think that when you're a kid, the adults can't be their goofy, or at least a lot of our parents' generation felt like they couldn't, be that goofy... Like, even when I'm, when I'm around my nieces and stuff, I'm a little bit more goofy because they're younger. But, like, when I'm around... And when I'm around kids that aren't my family, I don't do... You know, Why are you around kids that aren't your family? Well, you know, like my friends, like, for example, Jasmine's nephew, Rory, and people like that, you know? Or if I go to my niece's... Um, if my niece has, like, a school play or something like that that I go to, you know, and she's talking with all her friends or whatever like that. Like, you don't... with Especially with other people's children, you really have to not... It's, it's such a weird dynamic, and you can get mistaken for being a... Or a bit of pedo or something like that, you know. You know, I had to say it or beat around the bush. Let's just be frank here. When when it's with with my nieces, for example, you know, I've got two nieces. One is eleven and one's nineteen. Um, it's like when they were younger, you know, me and um, me and my niece who's close to my age, <clears throat> you know, we'd occasionally have play fights and stuff. But I couldn't really t- do that now with her. Would be a bit weird because she's like nineteen. She's like a woman. I'm like twenty three, and it's a bit weird. And like, but with my with my like eleven year old niece, it's not weird. She's my niece. It's play fighting. But if I did that with someone else's kid, that's really... You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that is really weird. But that's what I mean. Is like You have to act differently around children. When you're 10, almost all the adults you see seem serious all the time. Because you have to kind of act in a different way around different age groups. You know, I can't talk about everything I want to talk about when I'm around my niece. I'm around my 11-year-old niece. It's ridiculous. I should think not. Well, yeah, talk about... like What was it? What, what do we call the clitoris? Oh, uh, the... <laughs> Plum, plum bumble, plum bumble, plum bumble. Can't talk about the plum bumble or the plum bumbers. <laughs> you can't. You can't talk about those sorts of things when you're with an eleven year old. Think you you could because she wouldn't know what it is. True. She probably think it's some sort of Harry Potter thing. Maybe we should look it up. Look up. I one. don't think you, you're you're making <laughs> it sound like it actually is a clitoris. It's not. <laughs> if if you look plum bumbers up on Google, it will not show you. Don't look it up. Oh, come it on, will not show got, you a clitoris. We've got to find out if this is going to show a clitoris or not. It's not going to show you anything. Plum. It's not a word. <laughs> plum <laughs> bumble. Let's see what it comes up with. Plum bumble <laughs> recipe. It's a type of food. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apparently, I'm just taking a look. Plum bumble. <laughs> um, the ta- plum bumble by Taste of Home. You can make a plum bumble crumble. <laughs> a plum bumble crumble. <laughs> For God's oh, sake. That's amazing. Try the plum bumble crumble. Do you want me to make you one? Got a plum bumble. Yeah. I can't even fucking say it, mate. Plum bumble crumble. I think a bumble. I don't see what, because this is a plum bumble. It's a double food. You put pe- you put pine- pineapple titbits in it. I thought you would have put plums in it. Well, you put in... 
three cups of sl- sliced fresh plums, and then three quarters... And then half a cup of bumble. Th- three quarter cup of pineapple tidbits. Some people are going to be listening to this and be like, yeah, obviously, it's a plum bumble. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, the fuck a plum bumble Where does the bumble come into it? I don't know. I, the fuck is a bumble? It just says the ingredients. It doesn't say how to make one. Oh, oh, click here for directions. There's another link. Oh, God, clickbait. This is not Mike and Bradley's recipe corner. <laughs> I'm just curious what the fuck a plum bumble is. What the hell is a plum bumble? I don't know. I just want to see a picture of it. A large bowl combining cinnamon. I think it's just another word for... It's just like an alternate crumble. Do you know what I think it's like a crumble. So it's a plum crumble. Pretty bumble, much. Bumble crumble. Yeah, I tried to put it as one word, but it wouldn't come up with anything. There's pictures of these... It's just like kids' things, like, like that. I don't know. I yeah. don't know what that is, Mike. Well, it's, I don't know, it looks like a handmade clay cow or something. I don't know. You've got knickerbocker glories on it and then pictures of hats. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, that's, that's disappointing. A plum bumble crumble. What a day. What a day. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't stop laughing about that. I think it's the funniest thing in the world. Um, but we are we are unfortunately running out of time, which probably to, <laughs> yes. probably to a lot of the people who are listening are probably like, thank fuck they're probably, they're, thank fuck they're talking about fucking plum bumble. Plum bumble is the I want to go home. The plum bumble is the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. Plum bumble. I can't even say it without laughing, especially with crumble at the end of it. Plum bumble crumble. <laughs> See, it's amazing. You can't you can't help it. It's the plum bumble crumble. It's just it's the way to go. That's it. I would say people can follow you on social media, but you don't really go on social media that much. Me? Yeah. Oh, no. I, I mean, I have Facebook, but... Well, I was not going to get loads of random people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hear someone add me tomorrow. Like, oh, I heard you on this podcast thing. It was like, okay, weirdo. Yeah, it's like I put on... TJ put on her... Um, well, TJ and Alex said their Instagram page. But obviously, TJ's travelling a lot, and Alex has got a company and stuff. So no. with, with Instagram, it's fine, because like, with Instagram... I thought Instagram is just different to Facebook. It's not as personal, is it? You don't write a state, an indirect state. Well, it's about... pictures, isn't it? It's just pictures. <laughs> Do you not have Instagram? No. Oh, man, you need to get on that. My, my Instagram feed is purely... Look, I'm a simple man, Mike. I know. I re- I have Facebook and rarely check it. Yep. That, that, that is the extent of to, my social media. You rarely respond to messages. It's just quite lucky that because we always see each other on Mondays, you just go, maybe I'll check my phone on Sunday. Pretty mu- that, that's pretty much it. That's why I do it. The only time I check my phone is if I'm playing like Zelda or something. He was playing Zelda Minish Cap while I was setting up the podcast. I'm pretty jelly though. You've got I'm the like... Google Pixel, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a Nexus with me at the moment. My Pixel's at home. Oh, so you've got a brand new phone. And then you... Yeah, I've got the Pixel, which is my... Oh. <laughs> it's always popular. <laughs> it's always popular. Um, yeah, I've, I've picked up my old phone, the Google Nexus, I picked up this morning by accident. So Why is there even still a SIM card in the works? Couldn't you have taken the SIM card out of that and put in the other one? No, I, I got a new contract, so I'm with a different. Did you get? Did you, when you got a new contract, did you? Did you get? Is the phone with the contract? Is yeah. it? Did you pay it yeah, monthly? Yeah, yeah. Oh, because you're with Giftgaff, weren't you? Because you said the SIM. Yeah, it's shite. Don't go with Giftgaff. I don't. Don't listen to Brad. I don't want people to say. I don't want Giftgaff to get annoyed at us with all our <laughs> ten. Listeners. Yeah, they're gonna sue us. <laughs> us? It's me, mate. It's not you. <laughs> you come on here, slate their thing. I get all the shit for it. Oh yeah. You know, if you go on the BBC and like with like Russell Brand and Jonathan Ross, the BBC got a load of trouble for that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, got I don't. Too. I don't think this is on the scale of the BBC. <laughs> How Mike. dare you? The GCC <laughs> is bigger than the BBC. One day, if the, no. It was, I believe in you. I believe. I believe I'd in love this that, company. I, I'd love that to be the case, but I think the Joe Rogan podcast gets the problem is the whole BBC. Like that's a whole network. It's not like episodes. It's incomparable. <laughs> it's like the amount of views that the BBC gets. So it's like if you channel hop, would that count as a? Well, I think yeah. we need some sort of, you know, controversy. If well, we I'll, make yeah something bad happen on this podcast where we we slate someone really famous, someone that would bite though, like Kanye West. Kanye West wouldn't care about someone like us. And he'd hear us, and then he'd, you know, make a public speech about how he's going to That, that would be quite us. cool. But the problem is, is that the, con- the the only controversial things I'd say would be some of my ideologies about certain, re- like, religion. Like, I, I bet go into a little bit of Reese. I'm not going to get into it now, but it's just some of my ideas about religion. You know, I, I know don't, your I don't, ideas about religion. Yeah, I don't think anyone who follows religion is necessarily bad or anything like that. It's just there's certain things that would take quite a while to explain all my ideas about, and some people don't agree with it because a lot of people are very liberal and say you can't tell people who are religious they can't believe in this, they can't believe in that, that sort of thing. So it's like, you know, that's the only thing I can think of controversy that could come out of this, but it would just be it would just be bad. It's like, 
you know, it's like the racism thing, you know, I don't want to get famous on being a podcaster for being that one, that podcaster who was racist and I have to spend years of my life trying to convince people I'm not racist. <laughs> that's all I want. I'd rather just not have the podcast and if that's going to happen. Fair um, enough. Anyway, yes. So uh, I was just going to say, yeah, I'll just wrap it up on because you don't have, uh, Inst- I can't believe you don't know what Instagram is, mate. I'd say, all- no, I know what Instagram is. I just don't have it. All I follow, right, is cute animal <laughs> pictures and models. That's it. It's because you're a loser. Loser. <laughs> loser. <laughs> hey, I have heard this card before. I follow me have. on... Follow me on... Uh, you need a Twitch or something. You need to be one of those dudes who just watches anime. I am on day. Twitch. You are? No, 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 I, I don't actually stream or anything. I oh. just have a Twitch because I watch people. Oh, okay. No, follow me on Habba Hotel. Club uh, Penguin? Add me on Bebo. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> look, look me up on Match.com. You are. He is on Match.com. <laughs> he is on Match.com. I signed that up to Match.com I'm not on, a I'm... couple of weeks ago just because someone convinced me to do it. So convinced like, you? Fine. There's women on there that may have sex with you. Well, that's a good one. No, no, no. Hey. Some, someone was like, a friend at work was like, uh, use, I'll use Match.com and it's good. You should sign up to it. And we were just sat out do at lunch. Do you pay monthly for that? Uh, I think you can. Are you in the free part of it then? I don't know. <laughs> I, so should pro- I should probably check my direct so, debit. So much dollar, you didn't care. <laughs> but yeah, I just he he said yeah, sign up to it, and I was like, do you know what? It might be a laugh. I might I might meet the one. So <laughs> <laughs> the way you raised your eyebrows at me then just made me feel like I was the one for a moment. You are the one, Mike. Beautiful. That that's what this is all for. Okay, I just want you to realise that you're the one. <laughs> just get, go on your Match.com profile. Just loads of pictures of me and you together. <laughs> yeah. Just like, they love me. It's like cutting your arm. <laughs> It's like I'm on, I'm on plenty of fish, but I think I think my profile's on plenty of fish. But I'm an idiot, right? I, I put my plenty of fish profile. I think it's Mikey B one six four. Mikey B. What's well, Mikey B? Because yeah, I kind of like Mikey Brap. B. <laughs> it's just Mikey B because that's like my Twitter handle and things like that. So it's just like it's because Mikey B one six three rhymes. But I stupidly typoed and did one six four, which isn't my birthday or anything relevant to me. So it was Mikey B one six four, which just sounds shit. <laughs> but on plenty of fish, you have to delete the account to make it, to change the name. You have to delete the account, make a new one, and I just couldn't be bothered. I did it one night when I was really tired and probably quite desperate. So I was just like, <laughs> I think I was just lonely one night, feeling horny, cock in one hand, tears in the other, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should stop doing this and go on plenty of fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I'm not on there. Oh, I think I am on there at the moment. But I haven't got the app or anything. So if anyone's messaging me, and... oh, I I very rarely check. This match dot com app. I thought you were talking about four women on it. Yeah, but that was that was like bragging three just bragging, or four weeks po- ago. I'm just bragging while not on the podcast. Yeah, I just rarely talk to like five it. women. No, I th- I think I've got like four or five messages on there, but I haven't checked them. Why have you even got the the app? If you're not because gonna, because someone just said these I poor should women on. They see your no. beautiful bear like body and think I want some of that, and they're just stringing them along. I find that offensive. To whom? To me. Why is that offensive? Because you just said I have a bear-like body. Bears are giant, scary things that could kill any human. You should be thankful. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't make me sound nice, does it? How about a short Wookiee? That's worse. Tall Ewok? (laughs) A tall Ewok. (laughs) Bradley Hobby, the tall Ewok. That's where we're ending. Cool. And, uh, what were you going to say <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 cool. <laughs> no, we'll end it there, Mike. Yeah, we'll end it there. Okay, you guys heard it there. We're going to end it, and we're not going to make it go wrong any longer than this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of part two. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, guys. Next week's episode is going to be Science But Simple. It's going to be the second episode of that sort of mini-series within my own podcast series anyway. It's with my buddy Josh, who's got a degree in marine biology, and we just talk about sciencey things, because I'm not smart enough to understand them, so we discuss them in a way that's easy to understand for myself and really anyone else. Next week we can talk about how the tides work, you know, with the moon and all that sort of jazz, you know, I'm not going to go into it now, but if you're interested by that, or if you are you think you know about it, but you're not fully sure, you know, just tune into the podcast, it's great. They're, they're only shorter ones, they're always less than an hour. And I always try and be sure that everyone would be able to just switch onto it and understand it. So, yeah, that's kind of the point of science, but simple. So, yeah, if you fancy that, tune in next week. Uh, the week after that, I think I've got... It'll either be an episode about transgender with uh, Josh, who's, funnily enough, in the science but simple one, and Reese, who's in the first episode. Um, or I'm going to release the one which is my chat with my buddy Johnny, which is a bit more like uh, this sort of one with Bradley. So I haven't really figured out which one I'm going to release uh, yet after the uh, science but simple one. But, yeah, next week will be science but simple. 
As I said at the start, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And be sure to subscribe to us on all the usual podcast apps, YouTube, wherever you listen to us. Anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you listening. Thanks as always, and I'll talk to you guys next week.